Hey guys, Ron Denut here. Um, getting ready to um, mount my uh, Republic of Gamers uh, Rampage 3 Black Extreme Motherboard back on the tray for the TJ11 kick ass build. And um, getting ready to route um, my tubing, at least for the processor and the chipset, coming from here to here and then back out. So I'm going to go from my reservoir pump, uh, I mean, to the radiator, radiator to the processor in, out of the processor, <coughs> into the chipset block, out of the chipset block, and back into the uh, to the pump uh, reservoir. Um, the graphics cards I have are uh, MSI Lightning uh, Extreme Edition. They are not, they're air-cooled, they're pretty quiet. I would like to get some kick-ass uh, water-cooled um, graphics cards, but um, right now they're the best that I that I found, that, and, I, and I'm going to be using those, so no water cooling for a second loop uh, for that, so I'm going to use one loop and uh, feed the processor first, then the chipset, and then back. And one of the things that I use are coolants. You can see that coolants, um, no spill, uh, quick disconnects. And these guys are great. I've used them uh, before, and basically. Um, they allow you to, um, this is a threaded mount that's going to go inside of my uh, the threaded portions. And then where, and then here's the female side. Alright, these are, these are the uh, VL3NF13s. Um, and this is a four half inch ID, um, three quarter inch tubing. This is the compression end. So basically what you do is once they're mounted you have your tubing connect to this. This is into the block or the uh, reservoir. You will um, push them on uh, right here and then they lock and that's it. And to get them off you twist them and you come off and there's maybe sometimes a drop, sometimes I've seen nothing. So this is how they, uh, they go together. So I'll be mounting these into the uh, to the block. And then I'll be mounting another one here. And then another one here. And I'm going to use the males I've gone. I've used different ports, but these guys are small and compact. I'm going to be using the male, threaded male ones on the... Um, on the motherboard uh, connections and then the tubing will have the compression side right here compression side of the tubing on the female portion so to go female loop to there and then male with a female on the tubing going out so that's it right now okay here are the uh, the male quick disconnects mounted and just so you know these are the VL3N dash MG. They're Coolance Quick Disconnects. <coughs> they have the G quarter inch um, threads and uh, I've got them installed in, out, and what will be the in for my uh, for my water block and then the out. And then just to show you how they uh, how quickly and easily that you, you would have tubing on this end. Okay that's on. And when you want to uh, service it, you just take it right off. And of course, you'll have tubing on the other end of this, but that'll be sealed inside of this quick disconnect right here. So this quick disconnect will not allow any uh, any uh, fluid, any coolant to come out. Uh, like I said, there might be a drop, but uh, nothing really. That's the beauty of these things. So I can maintain it and then this motherboard gets mounted onto a tray that slides into the TJ11 uh, and uh, that is uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this so I can service that motherboard and not have to totally disassemble a loop. Um, it's very easy, just disconnect it, the liquid stays in the tubes or inside the blocks and uh, I'm done until I need to really service it and drain them out. Okay. Okay, we have the uh, quick disconnects installed, the threaded ones going uh, into the blocks, and then the compression fitting coming out of the CPU chip 
that's a loop going into um, the uh, the chipset block, and uh, I'm using a Primo Chill UV Red uh, Pro LRT anti microbial tubing. That's a half inch ID and three quarter inch side diameter. And if you don't have a pair of these, uh, Home Depot. Okay, what we have here is the uh, the guts of the uh, TJ11, all laid out and uh, ready for a uh, a water check. Since I use quick disconnect fittings, I was able to uh, take apart each piece of the uh, loop very easily, and then uh, set it all up. The motherboard is on the uh, tray, so that tray is just sitting there, all ready to rock and roll. I have uh, at the start here. We're gonna we have the coolants. RP 452 times 2 reservoir. I've got um, both of those bays connected with the serial loop and it has two of the MCP 655 pumps in it and uh, for redundancy I have uh, the radiator back there it is uh, an excess PC RX 360 with uh, three tri low speed fans that radiator has eight fins per inch so that's set up for dealing with um, low speed fans and I want quiet in my setup so that's why I chose that setup and let's see here um, connected to everything here is a um, Skyth Cosimaster Pro and I also have uh, thermal probes in the um, one thermal probe connected right there in the radiator that's going to a port on the uh, to give me a temperature reading of the uh, output of the rad and then I have another thermal probe that you can't see that's connected to the back the inlet uh, to the reservoir so I can see what the temp is coming out of the loop going back into the reservoir and then I also have connected up in that wire mess there of the flow meter. Um, actually, I can probably show you that. Here's the flow meter right there on the loop. And it is connected to one of the, uh, the uh, uh, fan ports on the, uh, SCSI, the, the controller. So we can... Uh, hopefully see the flow rate so now what I'm going to do is start filling this up then connect the power to the pumps and uh, see how it goes and back in the back is an AX1200 power supply which I have um, modified uh, the, uh, the old trick to uh, put in the the jumper between green and ground on the power supply so that the power supply will turn on without being connected to the motherboard so I don't want any shorts or any, any if any liquid gets on the motherboard uh, I gotta do is clean it up and not deal with uh, major problems alright so that's it loop is going from reservoir to radiator from radiator um, a top port out going into the CPU from the CPU to the chipset and out of the chipset back into the uh, reservoir. All right, let's see uh, how this goes. I'm going to start filling up the the reservoir now, and then I'm going to connect the power and start the loop going and check for fluid leakage. This is PCI clear coolant that I'm using. to connect the power to the pumps starting to get some 
liquid coolant in the loop. I'm going to continue to put more fluid, fluid, fluid in the loop. Okay, so right now I'm just letting gravity do its thing right now. Okie dokie. put some more turn it back on So far, no leakage anywhere. Clean that off. That was a little burp. Cover my hand over it this time in case it decides to burp again. fluid making its way to the chipsets. Nothing coming back yet. get some more. Make sure these guys are getting Right now I have the pumps both set on three. Yeah, there's a variable range on these pumps from one to five. You can also get the MCP 655s without the, I think they're set like on a permanent four. The only leak I have is at this fitting here right now.
Hating the reservoir. You get full up. A lot of air in there, I can hear. Those pumps moving some air around in there. See here, water temp on the, let's see, that's number one, the, uh, going into the, uh, coming out of the rad, it's 21.2, now nothing's powered up, so the temp should be about the same, and 21.6 going back into the reservoir, so, and then I don't see any RPM readings on this um, flow meter, oh, there we go. Now it does show 900 RPMs is what I'm getting, or 8, 780 RPMs on the on the uh, controller. Oh, now I get it. I'm going to have to figure out how that flow meter should be reading, providing readings. I don't see any power light on it. There we go. This connection. Now I'm getting some readings on that. So far I don't see any dripping at any of the uh, points, either the back of the reservoir, the radiator, or on the chipset at all. There is uh, quite a bit of air, I think, still. needs to be worked out of here. What I'm doing is moving the pump and the reservoir around to try to get any air pockets out that might be in there. There's still, this part of the reservoir is still not, it does not have any uh, coolant. I mean, it, this guy is completely full up. And that shouldn't be. When I had done it before, that guy was full up pretty good, so. Um, anyway, we'll get it there. Alright, I will, uh, there we go. We'll come back after we continue to bleed it some more, but so far so good. No leakage, and pumps are running.
and looks like I even have a flow um, meter readings and temp readings. Of course, the temp readings don't mean anything until I get the system powered on and some heat on the chips and chipset. That's it for now. So far, no leaks at all. Um, just a little bit of uh, some air. It's quite a bit of air that's got to be bled out of this. So um, it's running uh, well. It's on, the pumps are both set on two. Uh, I was adjusting them up and down and moving the rad around, and that helped get a lot of the air out. Uh, also, uh, flicking the tubes to move some of the bubbles would help. Uh, let's see, right now, the Kazi says the uh, number two fan, that is the temp for the um, return side, so that's currently the, the temp that's on the um, return to the reservoir. And that 1530 number there is the current RPMs, so that is reading RPMs. Uh, for the flow and that's with both pumps set on two so um, I had it down originally when I first hooked it up with all the air it was only hitting like 800 900 rpms but now and that was when it was set on four now they're both set on two and we're getting 15 60 1590 it's fluctuating a bit there so so we'll let it go some more Okay, so uh, I finally have the unit bled. There's still some little uh, bubbles in the uh, in the window. I don't know if you can see them. Yeah, and uh, so they'll make their way out, but it doesn't burp and hiss and gurgle like it did. And so uh, it probably took a good two hours uh, just letting it run, turning it off, adjusting the uh, the uh, uh, pumps down to two, and then sometimes back to three. But uh, since I have two pumps in there, I always adjusted them the same. And actually, they're both running at two right now. And the the indication on the um, the um, the RPMs from the flow meter shows them steady at like 1680, 1700 RPMs. That's the flow meter set at uh, uh, with the pump set on uh, speed uh, level two. So uh, anyway, getting ready now to. Uh, install this guy inside the case uh, all the plumbing works there's no leaks never had a leak at all and uh, here's the case standing by getting ready to be outfitted and uh, one of the things that I did order and came in was uh, a switch panel and I don't know if you can see that but <clears throat> the switch panel is a nice aluminum switch panel that has two switches on it and I'm going to have them uh, taking care of my lighting inside my case. My fans from my radiator will be on a dedicated power. So when I turn the unit on, those fans will automatically be on. But uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Um, I have lights inside the reservoir. On the left-hand side, I have all blue. And then I will have both UV and blue lights in my case. But in case I want to have one or the other, this is what I'll be able to do. So there's no lights, no blue lights at all. The blue light side is wired to this switch. There's blue lights in here. The Bits Power X station has uh, blue lights on it. And then I'll have blue cathode uh, tubes and a blue light string on it as well. So when I want that, I'll press that on. If I want UV, I have UV hose. And I'm getting some Mayhem's UV coolant uh, dye that will light up in there. Um, this X station is UV and I'll have UV cathode tubes uh, as well so that'll be this and I don't know you can see that came on um, this side has UV lights mounted on the side of this uh, the plexiglass there so I don't know if you can see that uh, but uh, and then of course the case will have UV and then if I wanted both for whatever reason they would both be on so, uh, so I thought that was pretty cool so now I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the uh, Put this guy in the case. I'll be uh, wiring up the uh, motherboard to get all the uh, cabling and everything right. And then I'll be uh, doing the disconnecting, the quick disconnects from the radiator and the blocks and the reservoir and mounting it into the case. So you'll see that um, 
I'll video some of that as I progress. Thanks.